Can Joe Missoula dial back the intensity and accept losses early in the season? We'll talk about it right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand, it's holiday season. Drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the Knicks. Watching competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the seeds gain in locks on NASA. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from D. White on the breakdown. John on the mic documenting domination. Matter pen a back day, it's all seeds nation. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business. How we finish locked on. Celtics pod, home of the Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. I'm here for you every day, so if you're new to the show, welcome aboard. Stick around 30 minutes-ish every day of Celtics podcasting, including after uh, games. So maybe it's five days a week, maybe it's six or even seven. So subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Watch the show on YouTube. Get into that comment section. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm John Corrales. I've been covering this Celtics franchise for almost 20 years. Now I'm doing it as a beat writer for Boston Sports Journal. I've also written a couple of books, which you can buy on my website, Built Different. Celebrates the Celtics win. Uh, Banner 18. Uh, it's a real nice kind of glossy photo-filled book. 30 bucks on my website, signed, personalized, mailed out to you in the United States. International si- shipping. Well, let's talk. Let's see, because that... That costs a lot of money, so uh, sorry. Today's show brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers bet 5 bucks. You get three weeks free of NFL Sunday Ticket. That free trial from YouTube and YouTube TV is at FanDuel.com to get started. Camp questions. That's what we're doing all week long. This camp question is, I think, a, a byproduct of the Joe Missoula interview that I had here a couple of weeks ago. If you've missed it, go back through my feed. Two parts of Joe Missoula, like 40 minutes plus of Joe Missoula talking here on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Super intense guy, right? He's the most intense guy you know. And he's even said, he said it on this podcast right here when I said, you like to let your intensity shine. And he said, uh, I've learned how to fight, to how to try to fight to work so it doesn't come off that way. But if I had my choice, I would stay in that mode for 95% of the day. He loves the intensity. He feeds off the the intensity. He wants to let that intensity shine through. The man is obsessed with winning. We know Joe Mazzulla as the guy who tore his meniscus after two March losses to the Atlanta Hawks. Those losses came after a nine-game winning streak that clinched the top seed for the Celtics. They won the East by 14 games. They lost two games in March, late March to the Hawks. And he told the pardon my take podcast quote, I went on the mats and punished myself and pounded my body until I couldn't take anymore and ended up tearing up my knee. He tore his meniscus because he went and did jujitsu until his knee just got torn to shreds. After two losses to the Hawks, that didn't mean a damn thing. So he's an intense guy and he loves winning. So my question is very simple. Can Joe Missoula dial it back enough to allow some early losses and stick to whatever plan of rest, of relaxation of guys missing time, guys limiting their minutes, whatever it is. And we know they have to do something. We know they can't just come in and have Tatum and Brown play 38 minutes. Not after playing 101 games last year, which shortened their off season. And with Tatum and Holiday, who's, you know, in his mid thirties and Derek White, who just turned 30, those guys playing in the Olympics, they didn't have the same off season as they usually do. They all need to dial it back just a little bit. No porzing is to start. We talked about all of this on yesterday's podcast, me and Tom talking about the Celtics defense. It's not going to be what it was because you don't have Porzingis. So they're going to have to play other guys, which means they're going to have to start Al Horford 
And you can't play Al Horford too many minutes. And Al Horford will self-regulate when he's on the floor. So there are going to be a lot of choices that Missoula has to make. The question is, will he make those choices? Because it's the one thing. I'm a huge believer that your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. And Joe Mazzulla's intensity may be his greatest strength. But his obsession with winning and winning everything. He, he's obsessed with winning conversations. I've literally been in a scrum at the practice facility talking to Joe and laying out a premise and he'll challenge the premise. And after a little bit of back and forth, either I or somebody else kind of gave him like, Oh, okay. Okay. I'll give you that. And he has said, literally said, I win during the conversation. So I'm not making up the fact that he wants to win everything, including conversations with the media. He wants to win everything. Can he dial that back? Can he play Tatum and Brown 32 minutes, which isn't a huge departure from what they've had, right? Tatum plays almost 36. Jalen played 33 and a half last season. So a couple minutes, a couple extra minutes on the bench, a little extra time on the bench for Jason Tatum. Can you keep Horford to, I don't know, 22 minutes as a starter? Can you do that? Can you commit to the minutes restrictions when you know, oh, here's a run. There's a matchup. Jason has this matchup. Jalen has this matchup. But it's not, let's just say, six minutes on the clock. Six minutes is when he's supposed to go back in. And it's not that yet. It's it's 7.30. Close enough? I'm going to put him in. No. you got to keep him to time, which falls on the assistants. He has to be willing. Joe has to be willing to give up some of that and tell Sam Cassell or whomever on the bench, this is the substitution pattern for Jason Tatum. This is the substitution pattern, <clears throat> excuse me, for Jalen Brown. He comes out at this minute mark. He goes back in at this minute mark. I'm not looking at the clock anymore. And when I turn to make a sub, I'm turning to Sam Cassell. Who can I put in? That has to be how this goes. If he can't do that, if he just turns around and says, Jason, go. Jason's going to get up because Jason Tatum wants to play basketball. Jason Tatum will play 48 if you if, if let him. Jalen Brown wants to play 48 minutes. I think Al Horford's the one guy who, who sits there and, uh, look, guys, appreciate it. I'm pushing 40. Um, I'm good with eight-minute stints, you know, or six-minute stints. Six, 12, 18, 24. Boom, there we go. Four quarters, six minutes a quarter. I'm done. I'm good. But you got to trust your coaches. You got to trust your staff to put together the plan. You got to trust the training staff. What is, what am I allowed? What am I allowed to do? Is he willing to, to do that? And we'll get into the, the the options on the bench and what might make it easier for him to do that when I come back. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. And they're doing something a little bit different. They're giving everybody three, we three weeks, I can speak, three weeks free of NFL Sunday Ticket courtesy of YouTube and YouTube TV. You've got until September 22nd, just a couple of days left. All you got to do, every FanDuel customer, you bet five bucks to get the three-week free trial. 
Then with a YouTube TV based plan and uh, an, a current form of payment, a Google account, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. And you can cancel at any time. Again, YouTube TV based plan, a Google account, current form of payment. You get all of that. Now I was thinking like, Hey, maybe five bucks on the Patriots uh, to, to maybe keep it close against the jets. That's, that was not a winning bet. I'm recording the show in the middle of them, uh, getting spanked by the jets. It's ugly, but it doesn't matter if you win or lose the bet, you just got to place it and you're okay. If you're on FanDuel, use the, the tools that are available. So you don't get carried away. You know how much money you can spend, set the limit, set your, your budget, and then you can go hell, go have, uh, some fun over there at FanDuel.com. It's America's number one sports book. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On NBA daily, five days a week covering the NBA. Now that games are coming back, it's going to be the only place to go to get uh, the post-game big story coverage. So go check out Locked On NBA wherever you get this podcast. And uh, it's also on YouTube, so go check it out. So Joe Mazzulla is going to be tempted, no doubt, to play guys more than maybe their allotment if games are close. If he feels like, look, man, I really want to beat, I don't know, let's say New York, or maybe it's another team, maybe whatever it is. I really want to beat this team. I want to beat them so bad that I'm putting Jason in, and you can't stop me. And you can't stop him. He's the head coach. He can do it. But it has to it has to be the discipline. It has to be the discipline of trusting the staff. And also, the players have to give him that, that good feeling of like, hey, you know what? I don't need Tatum. I don't need Brown. And now that falls on, well, it falls on the guys who are already in the lineup, right? Jalen, Jason. Derek, Drew, and Al, like you got to go out there and perform really, really well to set the tone, right? It's up to them to set the tone. But then it falls on guys like obviously Sam Hauser, Peyton Pritchard, Luke Cornett, though all of these bench guys. And I'm looking at Jaden Springer, hopefully. I'm looking at Lonnie Walker, hopefully. Here are guys that can really help. And this is why I never really. I, I'm still not buying into Lonnie Walker is going to the G League. Lonnie Walker is going to get cut and go to the G League. And people are like, yeah, you save a couple of bucks there. May, maybe after all the stuff that we've talked about with the owners, maybe they do need to save a couple of bucks. But I, I don't think at this point, what's the point? What is the point? I think the Celtics just need to play Lonnie Walker assuming obviously that he shows up and is at, you know, at least what Lonnie Walker has been during his, his time in the NBA. If Jaden Springer can, can show some level of a jump shot. If Xavier Tillman can show some level of a jump shot. Now you have some of these combinations that, okay, I will, I will roll with these because they are playing hard. They're playing well. You can find combinations that fit. Guys like Springer can be, you know, strong defenders. Guys like Walker can go out there and hit a few buckets. They will have their opportunities early on. Luke Cornett, like I said, uh, Tillman, uh, Namiash Keda, all of these guys, the bench has to step up. This is, it, it really is important. This isn't just like, it, it's it's obvious, right? Everybody will say, "Whoa, the bench bench needs to step up." Like everybody's bench needs to step up, right? But the Celtics, this is an opportunity for these guys to go and have a November, a December, a January, where they're getting real, meaningful minutes. They have chances to put together some impressive resumes. So this is a chance for guys who haven't gotten a lot of opportunity to make things easier on Joe Missoula because Joe can just feel very comfortable going, all right, Jason, take a break. 
and and I don't know anything about whether the the Celtics are going to uh, have minutes restrictions early on. I, I am making an assumption, and part of this assumption is that you really wanted to. You got a hundred and one games from last season, shortened off season, no Porzingis, and a hundred plus games that they're going to play this upcoming season, presumably because they're going to make the NBA finals. I'm also presuming that they won't go five games, five games, sweep five games on their way to a championship. I think they might lose a couple more uh, this upcoming season. If we're presuming they're going to win a championship, and I would expect that's my expectation as of right now anyway, that's going to that's gonna force them to play 105 games or so. So they're going to be a couple extra losses. They played 101. You tack on an extra four. Yeah, four losses, five losses, six losses. You can get you can get a couple in there and, uh, and still win. But that's a long season. There's a lot of basketball to be played. I'm not trying to tempt fate when it comes to Jason Tatum. He's young. He plays a lot. He wants to play a lot. But they're they're gonna have to make sure that he's he's on board too. The players have to be on board too. We can't have honestly, we can't have the players coming in and and making making a stink over this because I don't I don't care about like revenge games and certain things where guys go for their own. I'm not worried about some of the shots they take. I'm never gonna call them selfish for that. But if they are going to ignore a plan by the team, if they're going to fight back on the team's uh, plan to keep them healthy and make sure they've set up a, a protocol for everybody to go and uh, have a, a as healthy a season as possible, and they're going to, you know, Air on the side of caution when somebody is showing signs of fatigue. They have a bunch of ways to measure fatigue. And they might be like, well, we usually let Jason play on these types of nights. But guess what? This time around, you're taking this back-to-back off, Jason. And that's it. And they're going to have to have the hard conversation with him like now, right? He's at, he's in the game. He's in the facility. The, the, the pictures have been tweeted out. The Celtics have shown us. Jason Tatum is here. So they're going to have to have that conversation with him now and say, look, man, we know you always want to play. You've got your contract. You've got everything. I know you want to get the MVP, but a couple of games off here and there. Don't worry. We're not going to mess with that. We just want to, we know how hard it's been to win a championship. We also know that the window is closing soon. So you're going to have to play a lot more. Think about it this way, Jason. This is just me as Brad Stevens talking to Jason, I guess. You have this season where you have a luxury. Let's just take it a tiny bit. Let's just be cautious a tiny bit more than we are, than we have been. Next season, you might have to play a lot more. The season after that, for sure, because guys are going to be gone and you're going to be here and we still want to be good. And you're the guy that's going to make us good, or one of the guys that's going to make us good. And in those seasons, you're going to have to really carry a big load. But now, since we're here, and since we've got all of these guys, let's take advantage of that. Let's take advantage of it. Let's get you ready. Let's let's be smart in October, November, December. And also, keep this in mind. This is just the first half of the season. We're going to ramp you up January, February, March, April. When do guys make their, their MVP runs? Are you going to, are you going to win the MVP in October, November? No. How many times, honestly, think to yourself, I'm going to take a second. Think to yourself, how many seasons in a row has somebody had a great October, November, December, and people say, wow, 
this guy could be the MVP. And then he ends up fourth or fifth or third. You, those guys who come out hot don't always stay hot. So the message to Tatum is just chill. October, November, December, we are going to, we're doing this for your health. And Jalen too. But Jay, Jason's the one that's like very, the the adamant. He's very adamant about this. You just tell him. We're going to start the first few months. Slow ramp up. Slower ramp up than usual. And then after Christmas, you get through January, all-star break. Then, then you're back to your normal minutes. And you get a big February, March, April push. And maybe you can make that late push maybe maybe for your mvp let's continue this and uh wrap up the, this camp question here uh, in just a second hey thanks for making locked on celtics your first listen every day make sure uh you're checking out built different buy it on my website it's uh available 30 bucks domestic shipping united states shipping uh 30 bucks i will sign it i will uh, Put whatever inscription you want. Give it as a gift. I'll write something to you. I'll write something cool for you. Whatever it is, you tell me what you want it to say, and I will send it to you. If you've already bought the book, I've got labels that you can. It's a four by six label. Again, same thing. I will personalize it. I will send it to you, and you can stick it on the inside of your book, and you'll have a signed, uh, basically a signed book from me. So uh, check it out. It's at johncorrales.com. So bottom line here, Joe Mazzulla, I know the questions about Joe Mazzulla. I spent a lot of time talking about Jason Tatum. It's about making Joe's job easier. And I know he'll push back on this notion. And I'll ask him about it. Tuesday's media day. I'll ask him about it. It's, it's a tough sell. And he'll never he'll never be able to admit that you're okay with a loss because he's never going to be okay with a loss and he's never going to admit that they're doing something and they're doing it with the expectation that they might lose privately i don't know if he would admit that but he'd never do it publicly and you can't, you cannot create a culture where you're admitting, you're basically admitting to everybody, yeah, we're, we might be punting this game, but they do have to, however they have to spin it, they do have to create a, uh, an environment where Everybody understands what the final goal is. This is different than any other year with this core. They've done it. They've won a championship. And as much as Joe wants to say, we're not skipping steps, we've got to do everything from the beginning and, and reset our habits. And as much as that is true, there are some things that are you're able to just, okay, we know how to do this. We know that in January or February, we can slip it into fifth gear and take off. So it's not about being okay with losing games necessarily. It's being okay with a longer term plan and understanding that without Porzingis and even with Porzingis, you got to ramp him up too. You're going to have to rely on a lot more depth. It's going to be a lot more of these, these bench guys. You're just going to have to trust them, and they are going to have to be the ones that say, We're, we are prepared. We are prepared to, to execute the way you want us to execute. And then Joe can say, after a win where guys the main guys play 30 minutes and the bench plays more than you would expect, and they win, like – he can say, Hey, we're always trying to win. And it doesn't matter who's in the game. We are trying to win with those guys. It's the classic. Um, it's almost from the tanking playbook, but 
They're not tanking. They're just preserving their best players. It's just all on Joe. He has to he has to put that intensity aside for the first few months of the season while still finding that balance of setting the habits and setting the expectations and you know it's a tough toe it's a tough line to toe but there is a question can he can he dial back the intensity enough to accept these parameters and coach this season differently than he has his first two years which you know, he, he doesn't have a ton of experience and he's already trying, he, he already has to coach differently. I think it's a good question. I think it's an interesting question. I'm very curious to see how the Celtics handle this during the course of the season. I will be here to talk about it all as the season progresses. Um, I, I know we're going to do minutes shows at, at some point. There's going to be a time like early November where I'm going to sit here and scream, these guys are playing too many minutes. And it, I know it's going to happen. I know it, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes and we'll, we'll see what they're saying. Uh, I'm there at all the practices. I'm there at the games. So it's an inside look that um, I can give you that not really anybody else can give you on this podcast. It's daily. It's free. So you just, you pop it on uh, either in the car, you want to listen to the audio or you want to watch the show pop it onto your TV while you're doing your chores, put it on at work, put it on a background tab. I won't tell anybody, uh, do that subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, first of all, thank you so much for being an everydayer. Love you for it. If you are, uh, willing to please share the podcast and tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the lockdown Celtics podcast here in the lockdown podcast network. It's your team every day.